Hello, Oslid Sync here. Recently, Jeremy from Red Means Recording posted an excellent video all about Krell patches, a type of alien sounding self playing generative patch originally associated with West Coast synthesizers and, in particular, Buchla systems, but which can be applied to a great many other electronic instruments. As an occasional purveyor of generative music, I'm a fan of the songs that the Krell can sing, and I've previously featured videos of various synths being patched this way. But one synth I've somehow managed to overlook for this task is the Artorio Mini Freak, which is a crime, because it has a range of features that make it suited not only to the classic implementation of Krell patches, but also iterating on the core ideas to take the Krell to new sonic and musical galaxies. Before we get started, in the interests of transparency, Artorio kindly provided the Mini Freak to me for free for the purposes of making videos on it, but they haven't ever asked for nor have they been given any editorial oversight into those videos. Time to go to space. So the general structure of a sort of classic Krell patch is this idea of a feedback loop between a cycling... Uh, a cycling envelope in this case a function generator classically which is articulating the sound by way of at the very least its volume so it's essentially our volume envelope and a source of randomness and that source of randomness is being reselected the dice is being rolled again each time the cycling envelope completes a cycle and then that source of randomness is used to affect uh, different aspects of the sound, its pitch, its timbre, and, and so on. So I'm going to start by setting up that interaction between the source of randomness and the cycling envelope, and then we'll go on to sort of set up more of the sound side of things. And then once we've got that set up in a kind of a classic um, West Coast Buchler style Krell patch, We'll look at making use of particular features of the Mini Freak to do other things with this idea in order to create uh, other musical outcomes. The first thing that we're going to have to do here is make sure that our cycling envelope is going to be in charge of the volume of the patch. Um, because by default, the main envelope is, is what's defining the, um, the VCA shape, uh, the volume envelope of our patch. And to do that, we're going to do a sort of a semi-hack, uh, which is that we're going to set our main envelope to be sort of as fully open as possible. Uh, so I'm going to uh, set the attack down to uh, instant, turn the sustain to full, and I'm going to set the release sort of half-ish way up. And the reason I'm doing that is so that um, when we release a key, if there's still a, um, a cycle going on on the cycling envelope, we don't immediately sort of kill it off we sort of have that gradual fade out which is probably more sort of aesthetically pleasing so we now have that uh, sort of instant attack and sort of slow release going on there so to get um the cycling envelope to control the volume the, the vca uh, on the patch we need to assign it in the mod matrix. Now you'll notice that there's no knob here which uh, responds to the vca amount and unless you've read the manual, you might not be aware that uh, there are some additional things that we can assign to uh, in the mod matrix by holding down one of the assign buttons and then turning the preset knob. And one of those things, if we come down here, is the VCA. So we can select VCA. So now uh, this is set to being the VCA. And if I assign our cycling envelope to that at 100%, it will essentially override what's going on here. So now the um, cycling envelope is doing uh, our volume rather than the main envelope. For um, our purposes here, we also want it to be uh, looping or running would be fine as well, but I'm going to go with loop here. Uh, so now... We have a flexible kind of um, tremolo, if you like. And you can hear when I release the note, we still get that fade out on the release. That's probably a bit too long. We probably shorten that a little bit. Yes, yeah, so we still get that one sort of hanging over there. Okay, so that's uh, job one. We have uh, got the cycling envelope now in charge of the volume of the patch.
So the next thing to do is come over and work out that feedback loop between the cycling envelope and the source of randomness. So our source of randomness is going to come from our LFO set into sample and hold mode. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, uh, so on LFO 1 at the moment, we're going to select uh, sample and hold here. And I'm just going to slow it down to its absolute slowest. So strictly speaking, uh, this could sort of re-trigger on its own, but running at the slowest, hopefully we can mostly avoid that. So I'm going to, just so we can hear it really obviously, assign that to pitch of both of our oscillators and I'll just put it on an octave so 12 should give us an octave uh, and now uh, if I uh, play a note and hold it for long enough eventually this pitch should change <laughs> see it is very slow Let's speed up a bit Okay, so we can now hear that that uh, random LFO is affecting the pitch of our patch, but we don't want it to just sit and change independently. Instead, we want to emulate that idea of the end of cycle uh, with our, our cycling envelope so that each time a new note comes in, we get a new value on our source of randomness. And that's actually really easy to do on the Mini freaks. there are some pretty um, flexible features when it comes to the triggering of the various modulation sources. So if we come into the sound edit menu here and make our way down to LFO and come in here and then in LFO one retrig, I'm going to come in here at the moment it's set to poly keyboard. So there's a, essentially an LFO per keyboard. Uh, I'm going to come across here and I'm going to switch it over to cycling envelope. And this means that each time the cycling envelope goes round, it's gonna choose a new value. Uh, I'm also, while we're here, going to do the same thing on LFO2 because although on a, uh, say, a, a music easel, I think you only have the one source of randomness. Let's, let's have two here because it's an option, why not? Okay. So we now have kind of the start of the Krell idea here, but the um, main thing that changes per note, apart from anything else that gives it that kind of unpredictable feel is that the rise and fall of our cycling envelope or function generated, the attack and decay should be changing on each note which then changes the length of each note as well as the articulation. So we get a much more sort of chaotic feel. So uh, let's assign some sources of randomness to the attack uh, or the rise and fall as it's called here. So I'm going to assign rise here and I'm going to assign fall here. And I'm going to put um, LFO1 on one of them and LFO2 uh, on the other one. I'm going to put F LFO uh, one on the fall, um, possibly in an inverse amount so that higher notes uh, are sort of pluckier and shorter. Um, so when the LFO is going high, it's putting the pitch high. Uh, and in that case, I want this to be shorter, so I want to send it low. So uh, we'll come into here and we'll choose LFO one going to fall. And we'll set that to a negative amount. I've got this set about halfway at the moment. Uh, so if I do this at just above 50, perhaps, somewhere around there, probably be okay. Uh, now, when I play a note, we should get different um, decay characteristics per note. And you can hear those lower notes are naturally longer, right? Which is quite fun. And uh, because we have two different sources of randomness, let's spread them about uh, a little bit. So um, let's use LFO2 to go to the rise. And again, we'll, uh, this one isn't assigned to anything else yet. So I'm just going to go positive by, uh, we'll say 40 or something. 
uh, yeah, let's do 40 and then let's set the rise down to 40 so we can get instant onset. And now our patch is doing this. Right, so I want to move towards getting some more sort of timbre movement going on here rather than this sort of this uh, sort of boring sawtooth wave thing. But there's a couple of things we need to fix up first. The first one is you might be able to hear on the attack portion sometimes there's this kind of jump going on, which is a bit weird. Uh, that's just because I haven't set LFO2 to be a slow sample and hold yet. So let's do that. So LFO2. Uh, sample and hold and set it super super slow. I should get rid of that weird jumping Cool. Uh, and the other thing I want to do is just make the um, pitch range a little bit higher that's been picked out. So maybe we'll go to, uh, let's go two octaves for now. Great. The first thing I want to do in terms of timbre movement is a really basic one, and that's to get that low pass gate behavior. Uh, that you have on the West Coast since the low pass gate is basically a VCA and a filter, uh, a, a low pass filter uh, acting together so that brighter sounds are louder and uh, when it gets quieter, it also gets duller. So what we'll do here is we'll turn down the cutoff of the filter. Maybe to about there. And then uh, we just need to have the same thing that's modulating our, our VCA also modulate the filter, which is our cycling envelope. So we'll come up here, cycling envelope to cut off and give it 65 or something like that. So we still take a bit of the top end. Yes, that's uh, doing the trick. Right, so let's do the sort of bulk of the uh, sound design because this sawtooth wave is very, very boring. So on a music easel, you have a wave folding type oscillator. And then you also have a way to take uh, that and feed it into a ring modulator or something that's doing FM. And we can basically set that up exactly the same way on the uh, mini freak here. So what we'll do is we'll set our first oscillator to be the, well, we've got a couple of different options that kind of do the right thing here. So I'm gonna go with the wave shaper to begin with. We'll see how that works out. <laughs> So you can hear that if we are modulating these things here, we're going to get some interesting stuff happening. So happy with that. And then on oscillator two, I'm going to set this right up at the end to the uh, FM AM mode. Make sure that the volume of this one is turned up. And we have a couple of different controls here. One is for the waveform. And then we have a frequency mod amount and a ring mod. And we can make use of those to get different timbre changes. 
Now, if we're going to get the uh, FM and Ringworld to be doing interesting stuff, we probably want to decouple the pitch of um, oscillator one and oscillator two. So um, what I'm going to do here is in our mod matrix, I'm going to get rid of the LFO going to pitch of one and two. And instead, I'm going to come into the second page of our assignable values, and I'm going to set this first one to be uh, the tuning of oscillator one, and this one to be the tuning of oscillator two. And then we'll use um, LFO one and LFO two going to each of those so that we can get all of those kind of beautiful clangy kind of uh, sounds happening. So uh, we can come over here and assign one, can go to pitch one, or rather LFO one can go to pitch one, sorry, uh, by two octaves. And then we'll do the same thing, LFO two going to pitch two by two octaves. Maybe just one octave, no, two octaves. So now we should have these two different oscillators using different notes each time, or different frequencies anyway. Cool. <laughs> I love those little short ones. Um, okay, so let's get some more variation into the sound here. Uh, and the obvious thing here is on our wave shaper, let's send a... Um, one of our LFOs into the, I think it's the timbre control, which is the sort of shaping amount. So we'll set this sort of, that sort of whole range is good, I think there. So we'll set that in the middle. And then we'll maybe use LFO, uh, let's use LFO two to go into there. Uh, so timbre one, uh, LFO two by 50. So it's that whole range. the wave control sound like and it's also doing stuff that I like perhaps we can have mm. do I want that random or do I want the cycling envelope doing that oh I'm not sure Let's maybe just try, let's just try sending LFO2 to that as well, first of all. So set that somewhere in the middle. Uh, LFO2 to wave on oscillator one. Let's see how that works. Sure, let's try the cycling envelope to that instead. Uh, so cycling envelope to wave. Uh, maybe turn it down a bit more. Yeah, that's more the thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's definitely more, isn't it? The aliens are singing a bit more now. Uh, so on oscillator two, we have our FM and ring mod. So let's just try turning up the uh, ring mod amount here just to see how that sounds. It's 
getting kind of harsh, but there's some interesting things to be heard there. But maybe just a little lower. Yeah, maybe we set that lower and just have it move around a little bit with one of the LFOs. So let's um, assign shape there to uh, LFO one. Uh, and only by like, what's it currently set to? 12, yeah, so maybe like by nine, just turn it down a bit. Yeah, and we're basically at that kind of uh, music easel place, except for, um, this is a really crucial thing, we need reverb. Of course we need reverb. So uh, I'm just going to come down to the final effects slot here, choose reverb, and uh, I don't know what type to go for. I quite like the dark room one. Let's see how that uh, sounds. changes by be higher. Certainly the aliens are talking now. Okay, we'll push this a little bit further in just a second with some of the other features on the uh, Mini Freak. But uh, first, I just want to come in here and I want to turn on the delay and we'll go with a... Um, filtered ping pong I think is a nice one That's, that's feeling fun. So uh, let's see how we can apply some of the additional features on the Mini Freak to take this to other musical places. I think there is a, to be fair, reasonable criticism that could be levied towards Krell kind of patches, which is that they're not uh, very um, conventionally musical. I don't think that's uh, necessarily an unfair thing to say. 
so um, what I'd like to do is try and make this patch as it is more conventionally musical. And there's a fantastic feature on the Mini Freak that allows us to do this because what we have um, on the Mini Freak is a way to quantize incoming uh, modulation, pitch modulation to each of the two oscillators. And then we can actually do that uh, separately from one another as well. So if we can uh, quantize this random uh, pitch information to a scale or, or to possibly two different scales, uh, we might be able to get something which is more conventionally musical. Um, so if we come into the sound edit here and come into pitch, we have OSC1 quant and OSC2 uh, mod quant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in to here and at the moment it's set to continuous which means we can get a continuous uh, modulation so we're getting frequencies in between notes but we can set this to be chromatic octaves fifths and a various uh, different uh, other scales in here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set uh, this one which is oscillator one to be a uh, minor pentatonic minor pentatonic yeah let's try that so now one of our oscillators is staying sort of musically in tune but the other one isn't but already it kind of sounds a little bit more obviously musical so for this oscillator 2 because we've got ring mod going on in here we probably want to be Sorry, that was just a cool sound. We're probably going to be slightly more careful when it comes to the range of notes that we choose. So rather than um, going with uh, one, even one of the pentatonics, I'm just going to set this one to uh, fifths. So it's just octaves and fifths, uh, which should always be consonant uh, with what's going on and should sound good with the ring mod in most cases. It might even allow us to push the ring mod a little bit higher. <laughs> Bring in another note as well. Maybe coming up an octave or two or three. Well, they're singing, but they're singing in a conventional, oh goodness me, Western musical sound. They've learnt. Which is nice of them. So yeah, we can take this Krell patch and quantize the pitch information so that we get something which is more um, sort of conventionally musical, if that's what you're going for. The other thing which is definitely worth um, giving a go is not being beholden to the um, uh, synthesizer structure of a book club music keys or where you have the wave folding complex oscillator running into an FME ring modi type thing. We can do other stuff. And we have a bunch of different options on the Mini Freak, so we should definitely um, think about exploring them. So one thing I think might sound pretty cool is maybe having oscillator one be our, um, where are we? Car plus strong and oscillator two being a comb filter. Maybe we don't set this at full wet here go 50 percent let's I haven't changed anything else yet so let's just see how that sounds and we can tweak as we go yeah 
I mean, that's that's instantly really appealing to me. Let's see what we can tweak here. So let's have a look. Turn, turn the gain a bit there. Super cool. Um, I'm glad I tried that. Uh, that wasn't planned. Um, this needs distortion, doesn't it? We need to slap some distortion at the front end of this. Uh, so we're going to distortion mode here. It's going to be too loud when we first turn it up. Turn the gain down. Modes. needs more reverb. That's, <laughs> that's so cool. Oh, goodness me. Uh, amazing. Uh, okay. I'm always tempted to say that's a separate patch. I can come back to it. Uh, let's turn off the distortion. Let's have a look at what other things we can do. I quite like the idea of having the second oscillator being one of our... Uh, let's try the phaser filter. And uh, let's run... He... The harm filter into here. That might be fun. No. Let's go with Sorax. Put the distortion back on. <laughs> uh, about what about uh, what about the two up FM? Is this going to be too weird? Probably going to be too weird. <laughs> because we're um, messing with the wave, which is the tuning. Wow. 
fun though. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, how about speech? Is this gonna work? Yeah, once it finishes the word, it's not gonna do it anymore. So let's try format instead. And then here, let's try the destroy mode. Phase filter works well. <laughs> All of you sing together. The one thing that we're missing... The one thing that we're missing on the Mini Freak... Unfortunately is panning per voice. Because if these were all happening in different places... On the stereo spread... That would be epic. But good fun. <laughs> I love those little short ones. I guess if we want more short ones, we can uh, just bring the fall down. And maybe set it to be the more uh, exponential shape there. So, if you want a more musical in terms of uh, harmony outcome from a crowd patch, we can do that. And moving away from the sort of music easel setup of the sounds can yield really interesting results. Anyway, I'm going to sit and play with this for a while. But I hope that was interesting. And uh, I encourage you to go and try out your own Krell on the Mini Freak. Let me know what combinations of oscillators I found you found worked for you. In the comments. As always, thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, take care, bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.